All right, she plays football. What's so surprising? She seems a restless one, after all. She moves, walk, stage left, stage right to exit. <laughs> I was standing quite far from the pitch, but she still noticed me. Hey, you! Oyana shouted. Wanna play? I did not know what to answer. On the one hand, it's no big deal running for ten minutes. On the other hand, any wrong move in my situation could be a final one. But in any case, my attire wasn't suitable for this weather. If I played in winter boots and warm jeans, I would sweat like a pig. And kill every girl in sight. Yep. And playing barefoot and without jeans would simply would be simply unethical. Maybe another time, alright? I shouted in response, turned around and walked back. I was followed by Oliana's screams about my pants or about me being pasty. Uh, a pasty. Or something like that, whatever. The evening was falling, making me feel tired and empty after a day wasted for no real purpose. Most guys would be like, I'm in heaven, I'm never leaving. Yeah. But he's just like, oh my god. I came back to the square, sat down on a bench, and threw an exhausted sigh. And well, some guys are thrown into some certain hells to face their fears. I'll better sit and wait dinner. After all, it's easier to search for answers when you're not hungry. Oh, like I am not doing, because I am extremely hungry. <laughs> they do That's give food to people. can't read. Yeah. They do give food to people here, right? You know, it's curious how the simplest human needs can break the will to ponder on things, to strive for something. E.g. Oh, um, it's like a for example thing. Mm -hmm. I feel hungry now, and I care much less about where I am or what is happening to me. Could great people also be affected by this? And in any case, how did Spartacus start to slave uprising in ancient times? I can only conclude that I am not a great person, and it is not. it does not really matter which mechanism do I serve as a gear. Society, Matrix, or Weird Pioneer Camp. <clears throat> My thoughts were interrupted by the bells chiming from a loudspeaker on a light pole. It must be a dinner call. I headed towards the canteen. It was a good thing that I now knew where it was. Ogla was there, standing on the porch. I stopped and looked closely at her, as if I were expecting something. She looked back at me for a while, but... At last came closer. Simon, what are you waiting for? Come in already. Guess nothing bad can happen <laughs> if I come with her. My teleporting vagina is waiting. That could cause, like, so many sexual diseases in the way I'm looking at it. <laughs> My stomach backed me up here. Look at all the people. Two of us went inside. The canteen looks like a canteen. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance to visit a factory canteen at some point in my life. This one was exactly the same, just maybe a bit cleaner and more modern. Metal chairs and tables glazed... Yeah, over... I thought I read that wrong for a minute. Glazed tiles on the walls and on the floor. Unsophisticated tableware with occasional crack. Guess that's what a canteen in a pioneer camp is supposed to look like. Simon... Wait a moment. We'll find a new place to sit. <clears throat> there are like literally four openings I see behind her right now. <laughs> she looked around the place. Whoa! Oh god. That name. Deva, hold on right there. Ogla shouted at Elisa, who was passing by. What? What's up with your clothes? Anything, anything wrong with it? Indeed, her attire looked somewhat provocative. Get your uniform nice and neat right now. All right, all right. Elisa got her shirt right and walked past, shooting an unpleasant glare at me. I'm gonna eat your soul. <laughs> so, where can we find a new place to sit? 
And there weren't a lot of free seats. Go over there, to Yulana. Um, maybe I... Yeah, it's fine. The food's already on the table, too. I had no other choice but to accept. Of course, what? In common Russian language, cutlet, a cutlet is minced meat, fried or baked in the shape of a ball of, or a cylinder, close to American patties. Compote is a drink made by boiling fresh or dried food in large amount of water. Compete in French. Compete. Compete in French. Of course, there was a probability that the cutlets were poisoned with Carrere. The mashed potato is generously seasoned with arsenic. arsenic. Oh, poison. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is arsenic? Yeah, it's poison. Yeah. And the glass filled with an excellent antifreeze instead of compote. But it all looked so tasty that I had no choice to resist. No chance. chance. I'm gonna go get food after this uh, dialogue here. Hey! What do you want? I replied rather rudely to Oyana, who was sitting next to me. Why didn't you play football with us? Because of my clothes, said I, pointing at, uh, pointing at the source of the problem. You're a pussy boy, right? <laughs> a little bit. Oh, all right then, eat. <laughs> this song. <laughs> However, there wasn't much left to eat. The cutlet was missing from the plate. Only she could do it. No, more precisely, none but Oliana could do it. Give me back my cutlet. In a big family, you snooze, you lose. And it can cost you a cutlet if you're careless. Give it back, I'm telling you. Uh, attempt to take the cutlet. You want to take it? Yep, I already did it. I looked at her I looked at her menacingly and was about to reach my hand reach out my hand. See? I don't have it. And indeed, Oliana's plate was empty. It seemed that this little girl eats as fast as she steals someone's cutlets. Take it easy. We'll work something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. There was no point in following her. If they wanted to poison me here, they could have done it a much easier way. About a minute later, Oliana returned and handed me a plate with a smoking hot cutlet on it. Hey, that actually looks pretty good! <laughs> I am Here's so that. hungry! <laughs> Here's one for the starving. <laughs> Thanks. It was all I could say. I was so hungry that my suspicions were gone in a flash. I picked up the cutlet with my fork and... There was like more... Oh god! What the? Like, more mashed potatoes than anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Some bug! N no, not a bug. An insect! Oh, That's you gotta, you had to be specific. <laughs> it got legs and it's wiggling! The plate fell onto the floor and broke into pieces. The chair hit me hard on my legs while falling. Or my leg while falling. I've disliked insects since I was a child. But, oh, this is me. But when these creepy crawlies appear in my plate, that's just way too much. You little. Oliana seemed ready for such a twist and was already at the door, laughing as she had just heard fresh stand-up comedy joke. Fuck it. I dashed to her. We ran out of the canteen. We were just a few dozen meters apart, and I felt I would catch this little girl easily. She plays football. <laughs> we ran through the square, past the club's house, and ran into the forest path. I started to gasp for breath. I should... Oh, well, I should have quit smoking, I guess. Oyana passed out of sight on the next turn. It can't be true that she managed to get away from me. It simply can't. I was standing, trying to catch my breath again. The evening was falling. Looks like I'm lost. It's a bad idea to stay in the woods at night. 
and better get back to the camp. However, I had no clue which way to go whatsoever. Well, you gotta choose at random. <laughs> Ooh, I strayed for quite some time in the forest and even thought of crying for help, but finally I saw Camp's fence behind the trees. Everything falls back into place, and the bus is gone. I mumbled quietly, or mumbled I quietly. No, fuck that. I I mumbled <laughs> quietly. On the other, uh, on the one hand, there was nothing strange about it, and the bus couldn't just stay there forever. On the other hand. It meant there was someone driving, because buses do not drive themselves. Or do they? See, we covered this earlier. Yeah, we did. But apparently, that was a train. That was a in train. Harry, in Harry Potter, it was a train. It, it's a bus to me. You're just weird. It's a bus. This world seemed too normal, but every event here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation, and a surreal, a surreal one. Certainly, the driver could have just been off for a snack, and I left too soon, and that's why... In any case, this is not the place for me. Whether that bus dri drives itself or not was probably an important question, but it was much more important how I had got here at all. And where this here was. The fields and the woods stretching towards the horizon had no answers. There was nothing familiar about them. A strange, odd, and alien world. However, absolutely not frightening at the same time. Either my self-preservation instinct decided to resign from its job... Or, all this running around the camp and local pioneers had lulled me so much that, with their carefree normality, that I was sometimes simpler forgetting what had happened and to me just a couple hours ago. Although I probably just had no strength left to worry. All I wanted was some peace, calmness. I wanted to just have a break from it all. And only after that, I would continue looking for some answers. Ready and reloaded. I, s I added some, because I can do that. <coughs> However, that would be sometime later. And what about now? Can I let myself relax? It got completely dark, and in any case, it was better to spend the night in camp. I was about to head back when someone came silently from behind. <coughs> Ooh. Hello. What are you doing here so light? It was Slavia, standing before me. I was so surprised that I got a seizure. It just dropped on the ground. What? I had a seizure. So, you haven't caught Eula, have you? She smiled. I nodded disappointedly inside. No wonder. No one ever have. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, she's a real rocket girl. She could have found a better use of her energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. You didn't manage to have dinner after all. Indeed, I... Did, I just... Did his stomach grumble? I think so. Indeed, I would completely forgotten about hunger. But after these words of hers, my stomach drew my attention to itself. My stomach drew my attention to itself by giving a traitorous rumble. Slavia smiled. Let's go then. What? Is the canteen still open? It's alright. I have the keys. The keys? Yes. I have the keys to all the facilities in this camp. How come? Well... I'm something like the camp's leader, leader's aide here. I see. Well, let's go. <laughs> it was an offer you can't refuse. Excuse me. I should have warned my roommate that I'll be late. Holy shit, She's I didn't. She's so herself. 
that she'll be worrying otherwise. You go on to the canteen, and I'll come in in a minute, all right? All right. I really did not expect that at such late hour. Someone would be there, besides me. And that somebody was apparently hopelessly trying to open the door. Without any secret thoughts, I walked up onto the porch. The lockpicker turned out to be Elisa. <coughs> I should have probably kept off and waited. She looked at me intently for a while, then said, Don't just stand there. Give me a hand or something. Meaning? Help me open the door. Why? Because I want some buns. I want some buns with kefir. The dinner wasn't enough. Um, is it really a good idea? Madam? Aren't you hungry yourself? Aren't you hungry yourself? Huh? You didn't let you have a normal dinner, did she? She smiled sarcastically. It's true, she didn't. It's fine. Slavia will come now and... What? Guess I shouldn't have said that. I'm off then. And you'll pay for this. You owe me two already. Having said that, Elisa disappeared into the night. And what was the first one for? Oh, uh, don't know. No, that's, that's what he question. said. I know. I'm just saying that's oh. a good question, though. Yep. Slavia didn't keep me waiting for too long. Is everything fine? No, I just got mug looked and almost stabbed with <laughs> things by Elisa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. Why are you asking? No reason. It's nothing. You probably saw a dead shot look of fear in my eyes or something. <laughs> Screaming, help me. It was better well, if I did. Yeah, I guarantee you she was as she was walking up, the other girl was leaving, and she's just like, I'm gonna kill you, you blonde haired bimbo. <laughs> <laughs> it was better if I did not tell her about Elisa. Everything's fine. It's no biggie. I said that and instantly heard a trace of dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go? As for Slavia, she seemed not to have noticed anything. <laughs> or at least she was pretending she didn't. See, told you. We enter the canteen. Wait a bit. I'll go get something. I'm not to cut off your testes. God, what the fuck? <laughs> I sat down on a chair and obediently waited for my server server Cerberus. Words. <laughs> Words. Oh shit, this artwork though. <laughs> my dinner was simple. A few buns and a glass of cake kefir. Yeah, her buns. <laughs> no wonder. I bet Hungry Pioneers finished everything off. However, even that was far better than most of my unusual diet. Oh Watch. damn, the beach has dropped! <laughs> Sylvia sat across the table and looked at me while I was eating. Is there something on my face? She's yeah, dead staring at soul. us! I know. No, just... She's a nature soul. <laughs> <laughs> she smiled. So how did you like your first day in the camp? And she's like dead staring us. Yeah, I know. This is fucking creepy. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's silly to ask someone who suddenly found himself in a different reality whether he liked the food in the canteen, the camp leader, or the assigned hut. It's alright. You'll soon... Get used. Get used? <laughs> Used? I, I, Used? I told you. Sylvia stared into the window dreamily. Frankly speaking, I have no desire to get used to such things, but as for her, she doesn't know. Or at least she wants me to think that she doesn't. Well, all in all, it's nice here. I had to somehow break the awkward silence. Do you think so? She asked without any interest. Yeah. This place is so... I wanted to say retro, but I managed to hold that back. 
After all, it was retro for me. But what about them? It might be the only kind of life they knew. How does this guy just pull these random assumptions out from his ass? How do you even... <laughs> just roll with it. Fine. If the term life was ap applicable here at all. So, how? She looked at me closely, as if something important depended on my answer. It depends on whether you're gonna die tonight. Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, lovely! <laughs> it's lovely here! <laughs> I guess you're right. She smiled again. I'm so gonna die tonight. <laughs> it's very good that you think so. Why? Well, not everybody likes it here. Because people who don't like it here die tonight. Yep, they die the and, first night. And, even, that's why that's why none of us have any babies. Hence, Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> 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 and what about you? Me? Yes. I love it here. It's great. Then you don't need to worry about what other people think. Oh, damn, Semyon! Well, I don't really worry. Slavia laughed. <laughs> This conversation seemed to be leading me far astray from where I wanted to get. And you're worried yourself? Uh, really? Why? I don't know, the look on your face screams terror. <laughs> what face? <laughs> your side boob. <laughs> your side his hair I like his hair, by the way. Well, someone is chewing so intensely. Uh I'm sorry. It's okay. I can force myself to be more careful with this girl. But why exactly her? If any local inhabitant. Every one of them looked completely normal to me. Yeah, that's totally normal. Precisely normal. So normal it sends chills down the spine and to the marrow. Normal, like, not like a neighborhood, neighbor human with a power drill in one hand and a subwoofer in the other. Not like a passenger human you can often meet in a subway or public transport. Not like a- okay, stop- stop doing this. Stop comparing <laughs> shit. We get it. We get it. Not like a co-worker- Damn, allergies. <laughs> Not like a co-worker human next table in the open plane office. Plan office. And not even like a friend human who only differs from other humans in his constant insistence. All of them looked normal as I would expect them to be, with their own downsides, but without any superpowers. And Slavia was also, oh, everyone he knows that's normal has superpowers, don't worry about it. Oh, and Slavia was also... <laughs> that's exactly what he was insinuating. <laughs> and Slavia was also... cute? But if you think about it, when he lives basically his whole world in a computer, everyone there does have superpowers. Oh, true. I glanced at her stealthily, not knowing what to say. I'm sorry, I wanted to show you the can, but ran off my feet. Uh, I didn't miss anything while being on my own, I guess. Are you sure you haven't missed anything at all? <laughs> she smiled so hard that I had to cast my eyes down in confusion. Well, how could I know? It's the first day I'm here. Okay, and what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, this canteen, the football field. And what about the beach? Just from afar. You should really go there. Well, let's do it together. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, okay, we will. Her naturalness started to scare me. But then I thought, <laughs> what if everything that happens here is how it's supposed to be? And this world looks strange just for me, but for them it is native? Maybe I got thrown into the past. Yeah, this would explain a lot. Can I ask a stupid question? No. <laughs> okay! She smiled and stood up from the table. It's, it's lat. It's lat. 
Will you find the way to Olga by yourself? Of course I will, but why should I go there? She'll settle you to someone. Oh, God. What for? Because I said so. <laughs> Probably this question seems stupid, because Slavia bursted into a good laughter. <laughs> you need to sleep somewhere, right? Uh, no, I'm on the computer 24-7. Don't worry about it. That makes <laughs> sense. I just plug myself into the wall. Yeah, I just charge myself. Fine. I'll go then. Uh, good night. Night. It's strange. Sure you up before you go. Uh, nope. It's strange <laughs> that she left in such a hurry. A key bundle left. Oh. A key bundle left in the door lock caught my attention. I was going to catch up to Slavia, but where does she live? And knocking on every door during the middle of the night didn't sound like a bright idea. Uh, I'll take the keys. Take keys. Take keys. I better take them. And we'll give them back tomorrow. Because who knows what will happen here tonight. Or at night. Such thoughts gave me a chill. It is me who needs to be careful here in the first place. The night, though being dark, wasn't silent at all. One could hear chirping crickets, songs of the night birds, and rustling trees from everywhere. Sudden desire to follow Sylvia's advice and go to the camp leader's cabin has appeared. I don't know why, but the look of the unknown bronze builder of commun communism, goddamn, put me into a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that happened today. That was all my constructive mood could offer. Here was a much brighter than near the canteen. Belated pioneers were running by, so this place did not seem scary at all. Bus, summer camp, girls. I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation of what was going on. I heard a barely noticeable rustle nearby. I shivered and looked in that direction. Girl. Girl. Just girl. That's it. Reading a book. In a bush? In the dark? <laughs> Lena. I decided to come closer and talk. She was the only new person I met here without having it even few words chat. Uh, hi. What are you reading? Lena was so surprised that she even jumped up. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Never mind. She blushed and stared into the book again. So, what are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone with the Wind. Uh, I'll praise the book. Let me praise the shit out of that book. Good book. Thanks. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it, but I think such literature suits her very well. Lena doesn't seem to be interested in continuing to talk. Well, if I'm bothering you... No. She answered while still looking into the book. Can I sit aside for a while? Why? And really? Why? Maybe just because I was very tired and being with company is better than being alone. And maybe I wanted to try to find out something from her. <laughs> I carefully examined Lena. This guy in his mind, in his conscience, is kind of a dick. But no, I doubt that. Well, I don't know. I'm not allowed to. Feel free. But if I'm bothering you... No, you don't. I can leave, just tell. Everything's alright. Okay then. I sat on the end of the bench carefully. After such an intensive talk, st staying here was the last thing I wanted. But it won't be nice to just stand up and leave. Didn't really go well, huh? We haven't answered anything. Haven't answered anything. Cool. It seems I made a fool out of myself. I bet if it was Oliana here, she'd have a good laugh at me. Do you enjoy being here? 
I recalled the slave the that's right the Slavius question <laughs> and thought it would be a good start for a conversation. Yes. She slightly smiled. I guess I like it too. Lena definitely isn't very sociable and probably can't support the meaningless conversation as easy as Slavia. But there was something in her that attracted the attention. Like a momentary sight or reflection in your glasses at rainy autumn evening which makes you turn around and stare into the darkness searching for something that you saw out of the corner of your eye. Of course, you weren't able to distinguish or understand what it was, but it still felt so tempting. Lena was still reading the book, without paying any attention to my presence, and I had no intention at all to ask her anything about this camp or this world in general. Beautiful night. Yes. How in the world would you start a conversation with her? It's late. I have to go. Uh, yes, it's quite late. Good night. Night. I noticed like all the characters now have like some kind of accent. Yep. Like a southern accent. <laughs> I've also noticed our friend Semyung here is kind of a man slut. <laughs> there was something strange in this girl. At first glance, she it's was. <laughs> She's a typical shy and modest pioneer girl, but the mystery of Lena took its own place in massive list of mysteries of this camp, which I started to put together in my head. Lazy evening. There's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. I headed towards Ogla, Ogla's cabin. The light in the house was still on. He just walks in. Yep. Hello, Simon. Hey, bitch, how you feel about me just walking up into this piece, homie? You're quite late. Oh, yeah. I went for a walk to look around the camp. All right. You will be sleeping here. Oh, god damn. <laughs> she pointed her fingers at one of the beds. Uh, right here? I got a bit surprised. Yeah, is something wrong? We're out of free cabins anyway. Well, the camp leader smiled, but I'd rather think it was a smile of politeness and after spilling some utter bullshit to me. You do want to be a decent pioneer. Don't you? That is straight up a porno line. <laughs> well, with this music, man, I've got yeah. to do this voice like that. Yeah, I know. Just, every time we see her, it's this music. <laughs> there was a clear <laughs> emphasis on the word decent. Oh, go back, go back, go back and read decent. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I got lost in thought for a moment. Don't you mind it, Maid Mustard? I have no idea. She looked at me oddly, with surprise and some kind of offense in her eyes. Pioneer should respect the elders. Okla said strictly. Of course he should. No one argues that. I blathered, not realizing what was wrong. Shouldn't you also? She stared at me. Now get on your knees, bitch. And suck it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Under such a gaze, I'm, even Mithril I'm Forge. she male. Oh my god. Even Mithril Forge by Best Dwarves Masters from the deepest dungeons would melt. Should I... What? What's up, Tut? What? 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> this ends in... <laughs> lack of understanding made me talk a level louder. You must address adults appropriately. Yes, of course there are a lot of strange things here. But this girl is just a couple years older than me. Or maybe even younger. Wait, she's... Oh, oh yeah, that's right, they never really defined her age. 
But I decided he said she looked 25. Yeah. But I decided not to argue. Well, just a few minutes ago, I would never call her adult. I have to admit that she was also given a strong character. And in any case, I wasn't in a position to argue. Uh, as you say, ma'am. I've mumbled. That's way better. This is how a decent pioneer should conduct oneself. I don't think they put emphasis on now, decent there. Decent! Good fucking hell! That's enough emphasis for you. <laughs> and now, it's time to sleep. Oh god. Honestly speaking, I wasn't going to become neither a decent nor indecent pioneer. Just yesterday, I wasn't going to become a pioneer at all. But, do I have a choice now? Nope. No desire. <laughs> no desire will put you down with the fire. This is a motto of. This is a motto Oglo was probably going to use. Go to bed. I went into the bed and closed my eyes, only to realize how tired I was after today. Something hammered in my head awfully, as if my brain started a night shift. And it seemed to be aimed more at rolling the steel than working with something more sensitive. See, don't you hear the heartbeat? Totally. The bus. The bus. The bus flew through. What? It's increasing because of you know what. God damn it! The bus flew through my mind. No, he was thinking about the bus and he got excited. Remember, he fondled the bus. <laughs> That's right. That was the first thing he touched. Yeah. The, the and the square with the monument. <clears throat> Canteen full of pioneers. And little, and little girl. And malicious face of Oliana. Ah, Slavia. Lena. And even recalling Elisa hasn't given me much of a negative feeling. Even though she's like gonna kill you. Yep, totally. He owes her too. We're from here for good. Day two. And this is where I'm getting food. Goddamn!